Hello! Happy New Year! Definitely. Please, first of all, let us know about the microphone situation because they're being difficult again. <laughs> <laughs> Can everybody hear us all right? Oh, oh. oh look, Bustler's here. Excellent. Cool. Well, sounds like we are being heard. Nobody's no complaining. Audio. Okay, well. That's not good. Great. Oh, okay. Cool. Well. Sweet. Hi. It's 2018. We have such sights to show you, many exciting things. Um, That's all right, Indigo. <laughs> Sorry, they just <laughs> said they were muted, which is why we could, they couldn't hear us. So. <laughs> uh, <for> <laughs> Should we kick off then? Yes, definitely. Um, and it's okay if I'm a bit softer today because I am sick and you probably don't want to hear me anyways. And Paul has all the interesting things to say. So that's why we set him up with a good microphone. Yeah, okay. We have a we have a surprise for you today. Uh, I have something very exciting to show you. Um, and I'm going to... It's so exciting that I've prepared several separate videos to show how it gets uh, from... Nothing to everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that was very badly put. Um, <laughs> let me let me intro this a bit. So we are working on a new feature that we will uh, hopefully be getting to you guys and gals and others at the end of January. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to make a huge difference to the feel and atmosphere of the game. Uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, the atmosphere and the overall tone and how we wanted to improve it. Um, over the last few months um, and we ended up going back to uh, one of the very first ideas we had when we started developing the game uh, but with that let me show you a vid of uh, how the game the overall look is at the moment so if we can run plain yep. hopefully you all will now see a looping video and Paul will still be able to yep. talk so yeah if you can't hear me scream uh, of course we can't tell because we can't see your comments anymore Oh, there they are. I'm going to pull this up here so I can see them. Yeah, okay. yeah so this is uh, this is a test scene. Uh, it's just a very simple little scene, but this is uh, broadly the look of the game at the moment. So we've got sort of clear objects in the foreground. We've got some little rigid body things that you can run into. We've got parallaxy stuff in the fog in the background. And we've got lots of fog. Uh, you can also see there's a sort of minor vignette around the edge, which is the sort of terror effect, which we'll talk about later. Um, but one of the first things we said when we were developing the game was that we wanted this to be a sort of foggy and mysterious world, um, and we wanted fog to sort of play the part that darkness played in Sun the Sea. Uh, so we've been experimenting with a technique of um, adding fog to uh, to the layer that the player is on, while still making it possible to see where you are going, which is obviously also important. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like with our fog and fog masking tech. If we play that one instead, all right. So. This is how it looks with a bit of fog on it. So obviously it's immediately, this is a big difference here, is that the area around the player is nice and clear. Uh, but as you go towards the edge of the screen, things get more and more obscure and spooky and silent hilly. Um, and objects appear to loom out of the mist, which I really like. We love looming. I did a lot of concept art of, um, of things looming out of the mist, so I'm really glad to have it in here. This is a very basic implementation of it. It's just got like a fog particle, uh, and there's a sort of mask over the player itself so that, uh, so that that doesn't actually appear in the center of the screen. So that helps our atmosphere, but uh, it makes worse a problem that we have had for years, really. Uh, which is that it's often quite hard to tell what you can hit and what you can't. Um, uh, this was slightly a problem in the Sea, less so because we had the, the sea, which was very clearly the sea. Uh, and it was a bit more of a problem in Zamarina because uh, the area under the player was land. Uh, and so it was hard to differentiate what was collidable and what wasn't. And, uh, and we did as much work as we could to sort of help people out with that. Um, uh, and in Sun of Skies, it's much worse because we have uh, discrete objects sitting underneath the player. So, like, you can see those rocks in the background there. Uh, and it's relatively clear that one of them's hittable and one of them isn't, because one of them's sort of foggy and one of them isn't. But, of course, now we're fogging up the uh, the objects in the foreground as well. There's a, there's a good chance you're going to run into something that you didn't expect to run into. And because that hurts in Sun of the Skies, we didn't want to uh, cause a massive amount of player frustration. Especially so, if you've just bought a nice fancy new ship or something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you just bought the Moloch and it's, uh, you don't <laughs> want to dent the rock. gold paintwork. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
which leads us on to the next right. thing. Yeah. So look at that. Uh, the headlight is back. Uh, so we had a lot of discussion about this um, and a lot of testing and a lot of iteration. Uh, and we've eventually, I think, come up with something that we like. Uh, the real win here in gameplay terms is that it's immediately really clear what you're going to hit and what you're not. If it casts a shadow, you're going to hit it. If it doesn't cast a shadow, you're not going to hit it. Um, we initially didn't want to do the headlight because we didn't felt it, feel it makes, made sense in the world. Uh, but as soon as we put the fog into the game world, uh, because the game world itself isn't actually all that dark, uh, it didn't make much sense to have a big light there. Uh, but when you put fog in, you're like, oh, hey, well, you need a fog light. Uh, so we tested this out and we put some uh, put some shadows onto it, and uh, I think it works really well. Um, I don't know if it shows in this vid, I think I put it in this vid, but you can actually knock those objects around and they cast their own little shadows as they move and it's delightful. <laughs> was it this vid? No, it wasn't. Oh well. You might see it later on. Yeah, I think in the video before this you could see yourself bumping into them on the way. So. Yeah. The really interesting thing was this, was it had a lot of sort of uh, uh, expect a lot of effects that we weren't necessarily looking for. Uh, having a really clear identifier of what the front of the ship is is very helpful for navigation mm -hmm. and it gives a sort of uh, a sense of direction to that was kind of missing before. Uh, and the other really interesting thing is what happens when you put it in a combat situation. I've got a couple of vids of this. So, uh, we're just going to uh, fight a Reach Marauder here. Now, the Reach Marauders have also got lights. Uh, hopefully there's one. So immediately the first thing is that they're visible more quickly. They can appear mistily out of the fog like that one just did. Uh, but you've got a much clearer idea of where they are. And most importantly, you've got a much clearer idea of when they are going to fire at you, like there. Um, so when you're in that the cone of light, chances are you're going to get hit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that makes uh, the sort of the quite the, the more challenging aspect of the combat of lining up the shots and avoidance feel a little bit more intuitive, I think. Uh, and of course, the other advantage is you've got what is effectively um, a reticule here. Uh, so if you can get your, I don't know if I actually managed this in this because I recorded it quite fast. If you can get your reticle lined up, did I get a shot off? Boom! Yes, I mean, you know it's going to hit. Uh, I think the second combat bit is a bit more of this. Okay, so here's another guy coming up. I'm lined up on him. And I haven't fired because I'm rubbish. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, and we dodge. So you've got just a tiny bit more of an idea of uh, of when you're going to get hit. So um, we're really happy with this. Uh, we've tested it and it works, and it seems to be pretty um, pretty robust. Uh, we had a lot of fun getting it to work with bridges. <laughs> uh, it didn't want to work with bridges at all, and we had to come up with a special solution for the, I don't know, seven bridges that we've got <laughs> in the entire game. Uh, but that's now working as well. So what we're doing at the moment is we're uh, rolling this out across the game as we have at the moment, which is quite a sort of long job, uh, adding bits of fog to everything. Um, it's especially, it's 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 a more powerful tool because the it's not what we don't have here is we don't just have like a single fog texture that sits around the player. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not always the same. Uh, we can curate it so you can have more fog and different coloured fog around different areas. So the circus might be like uh, full of purple steam <laughs> or uh, you know New Winchester might be full of dirty smoke and so on and so forth. So it's yeah. a great uh, aid to atmosphere. So yeah, that is Shadows and Fog um, coming uh, end of January, hopefully. Uh, any huge bugs or anything like that, but we're very excited to put this in. The whole I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned at the beginning, yeah, because I was very keen to be looking at all the things that I had to switch over. Uh -huh. um, but this build that will be coming out live at the end of January will be about exploration, yes, uh, and obviously the fog and how it affects the atmosphere uh, really plays into that. Yeah, we will also have. Um, I can't remember if this is out already. But the discoveries and spectacles there are they are they already? I don't think they're already. Okay, so they're coming. <laughs> yeah. we, we've talked about them on this we channel. We've talked about them a lot. <laughs> uh, but they'll be and there they were too. In our last vlog, so people yes. can see a few of them. So it's a big update. Not only will you have the shadows and the lighting, but you'll have uh, wrecks and mineable rocks to discover and spectacles. 
Um, and the other thing that's coming up is um, is some improvements on Terra, which we can show you now as well. I'm going to have to play the game for this. <laughs> we're going to uh, do so a we're gonna, little switch, which you guys can't see. We're going to do some musical chairs. Do we do see if we've got any questions on this before we um, Yes, during this time period, on. anybody please ask questions. Yeah, give us questions, because I'm sure you'll have them. Um, and <laughs> whether I have answers or not is a different thing. And Chris right. is in here too, so feel free to ask him things. Oh, is he? Oh, good sir. Can't do without Chris. <laughs> All right. right. Oof, there we go. Oh, I can see the comments now. Right, what have we got? Uh, should we take this video down there? So, actually, before you click anything, no. um, if you go hit the gameplay one, yeah. I'm going to be right in the screen as they Oh, uh, okay. And then on here. Finding the mouse is very hard. Normal service will be resumed shortly. <laughs> uh, How's this go? Is it going across? I think it's that way. Yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's go. So it let's might take, take a few seconds to load up the game, but. And then we can just leave that while we chat to people for a bit. Yes. Okay, how are we doing for time? Oh, it's uh, 20 past already. And whilst that is loading, I shall read out some questions. Shall I put us back on camera in the meantime? Oh, I don't think I can. And also, guys, let us know if the um, sound is okay, because I think last time it started quite loud. Um, but if there are any problems, just let us know and we'll try to adjust it. Okay. So, some of the questions. Um, will the use of the headlight drain the fuel like in some of the sea? Uh, at the moment, no. Um, our feeling with the light at the moment is that we don't want to tie it to any mechanical effects until it's better than Um in the Sun of the Sea, it had some quite complex effects. There was the fuel thing. Uh, there was terror increase if it was turned off. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why I'm looking back at you because no, <laughs> nobody, nobody can see me. Um, and there was sort of, I think, some confusion as to whether it had a, a, had a stealth functionality. Um, so at the moment, what I want to do is just get it out there. You, it will have no uh, player control at all. Um, it won't be tied to terror. It won't be tied to fuel. Uh, it is a navigation aid and uh, combat aid and, and an atmospheric thing. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, my feeling is that people generally won't want to turn it off because it's so useful. Uh, but we really want to get player feedback on this because it's a big change. Um, and we will look further down the line. We have it as a tool in our arsenal uh, if we want to uh, use it for, um, you know, survival mechanics and so on and so forth. But not immediately. You just answered another question, which is... Would it affect terror? So that's good. <laughs> yeah. uh, will there be different headlights? I assume right now we just have the one. Uh, yeah, just the one at the moment. Um, I think uh, agents will probably have different ones. Um, agents, sorry. <laughs> uh, tech talk. Uh, enemies, beasties. Um, so enemy locomotives will have spotlights of their own, as you saw. Um, Those are a bit shorter. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's lots of things we can do playing with that. I think organic beasties, obviously, it makes no sense for them to have a headlight. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Paul. <laughs> I suppose we could have, like, a headlight monster of some kind. But at the moment, I think they're just going to have a little uh, sort of uh, what you might call a Dark Souls light around them, mm -hmm. uh, just to sort of differentiate them from the background a bit. What else we got? The last question we have up right now is, will there be less fog between star systems? I feel like that could be a nice way to show dark between the stars. Yeah, okay. Um, less fog, no fog, etc. That really depends on how we do travel between regions. Uh, we're actually planning the design for that at the moment. I don't want to say too much about it because it's, uh, it's quite interesting. But I think uh, uh, the way we're thinking about it at the moment, travel between regions isn't something that you can just do by pointing your ship in a direction and hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be something that requires, you know, uh, technology. Um, and uh, you know a new map and all this sort of thing. So, uh, but we'll talk about that closer to Albion. Okay. Excellent. So, I think um, we're ready to start up and show you some extra little tidbits that'll be going in. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I was going to talk about Terra and spectacles and the effects thereof. Um, however, I do have a quick. I don't know if this is going to work. This is very much work in progress, but this is the fog actually in game. If it works. While it's loading up, somebody has also asked, does the headlight make it easier for things to see us? <laughs> <laughs> Again, not at the moment. I think uh, I, I don't want to... Oh, hello, I'm under the dock. That's exciting. <laughs> That's new. Um, 
I don't want to uh, turn this into Dishonored at this point. Uh, actually, while I'm here, I'm going to show you something else which is quite exciting. I think this is a small quality of life improvement that players will really appreciate. So here's me coming into dock. I'm just turning off my engines. Uh, and I'm under the dock, which is irritating, so I'm going to try this on a different game. Uh, okay, let's try that somewhere else. Hang on. Uh, yes, I want to quit. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's load up somewhere where the dock is in the right place. Uh, okay, let's do an intro zone. What I'm going to show you is automatic docking. Uh, it's quite um, it's quite low key. Uh, you don't have to press any buttons or anything. But what it will do is, if you get close enough to the dock, it will guide you gently in. Uh, and fix you in place so you can play storylets with a with a happy heart and not worry about drifting into the sides. So I'm just going to pop myself in there and let the automatic docking take. Nice. Yeah. That's the first time I've seen that as well. <laughs> and there's a little uh, there's a little effect and, and it'll 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 go pishtakov and have sound effects and be wonderful. Uh, this is a, a personal fave of mine because uh, it's always bothered me that you sort of sit around in dock waving around a bit rather than sort of being having arrived and then to get out I just accelerate <laughs> and I need to move that flower um, note to self move flower right so Terra um, now we talked about this before but I thought you might like to see it in action um, while you are in port a within range of a dock as we are at the moment Terra up here does not increase um, and the other way you can tell that's happening is you notice the screen is quite bright, uh, particularly the edges of the screen are very clear. I don't have fog in this build, I'm afraid, uh, so this is like uh, old school, but I do have a light. Um, anyway, as we head out into the dangers of the nature reserve, you should see that uh, eventually, I'm not sure how wide the collider is here. It's a little bird! A little bird's floating around. I'd forgotten we put those in, they're lovely. Off we go. Nature Reserve is quite a big port to test this on, so we might have to go away before we find our way out. Oh, look at this, by the way. Shadows on the boys. Ah, look, right, so the screen has closed in. Things are darker and spookier out here in the wilderness, which means that we are now gaining terror. Uh, and we've got some updates to the HUD that will actually display that a bit more clearly, but I haven't got them on this at the moment. And what is the HUD for those who are not tech? Oh, sorry. Gosh, yes. Um, <laughs> the heads up display. Uh, this bit here, uh, which tells you what things are going on. Uh, so this here is our terrameter. Uh, it should give me a current increasing condition. And it should be going up slightly faster than it would be otherwise, because we're not in port. Um, now, where am I? Let's see if I can find us a spectacle or something. I'm just, I'm not sure... Oh, okay. I'm way outside the map. That's exciting. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's head inwards. Do not follow Paul's example. We want you inside the map for now. <laughs> yes. Well, we have some plans for that as well, but again, I'm their secret at the moment. Okay. I chose the nature reserve because it's absolutely packed with stuff, but I've come into a very quiet corner of it, annoyingly. What I can do, though, is I could kill half my crew. <coughs> uh, and that might give us an idea. Always a good thing to do on a Friday. Yeah, well, you know, it's been a long week. Okay, where are we? I have no idea where we are. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, rather than sail around randomly... Oh, hang on, what have we got? It's a rock. You notice we haven't got the shadows in on this rock yet, so the light just goes over it. Ah, look at this. We have found a horror. It has a little message. It says, uh, sigils glow on these ruins. Uh, you can see what's happened to the screen here. Is that this means that terror is increasing quite a bit faster because we're in the presence of the these uh, correspondency ruins. Uh, now, if I didn't have my full complement of crew, if I was unlucky enough to have less than five crew, uh, then I would be <coughs> in real trouble, because... Uh, let's see if I can demonstrate this. Uh, look away, everybody. <laughs> Shield your eyes. 
Okay, three out of ten crew. Now, terror is accruing really fast, uh, and my effect will get even nastier. We should have a bit of sort of chromatic aberration at the edges there. Yeah, if you look at, you, can you see that on the um, Tickle Arts Haunt uh, label? The actual, the colours are sort of bleeding in at the edges. So it's pretty clear that you're in trouble when you st when you start getting this effect. It does not make me feel good. No. Sure. Um. This has actually been toned down a bit. It used to be sort of like heartbeaty. It's just really extreme. Um, and then, of course, it's possible, and I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but uh, it's possible to come across things that are wonderful and not terrifying. Um, notice that I'm out of range of the horror now, but my screen is still not terribly happy because I've only got three crew. Um, now, somewhere up here, it's a bit of a journey away, there is a field of trumpet flowers that is a wonder. And what wonders do is they actually decrease your terror um, up to a certain limit. We don't want you to just hang around them forever. Uh, yeah, they're quite big bands of terror, so... It is to the northeast of the, staying with the nature reserve somewhere, so hopefully we can find it. Only a few paper. Some nice, lovely little, uh, little wispy things happening here. Have we got any questions while I'm uh, while I'm sailing? Uh, not so much at the <laughs> moment. <laughs> I think they're all enjoying the spectacles. Is anybody there? Um, in which I mean, not necessarily in terms of our game, but the actual spectacles. The actual spectacles, <laughs> yes. Well, you're lucky you can't. Somebody was wondering though if the blurring at the edges could be correspondence signals. Sigils. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, wait till you see the scorn fluke is all I'm going to say about that. Uh, oh, don't get them too excited, Paul. <laughs> uh, I, I want to get them excited. This is exciting stuff. I'm, you know, it's exciting times for the game. Right. Oh, hang on. I think we might be nearly there. What's this? Oh, no. Oh, look. Oh, hey. We weren't expecting this. We have found a discovery. This is a beehive. Uh, hopefully, if I get close to it, I can... Collect some honey, and it made a splat, which is awesome. So there we have it. Uh, that's a discovery. There's lots of those. There are wrecks and things you can mine, and homesteads, uh, and others too strange to discuss. Uh, I think I've lost the spectacle here. As you're finding your way, somebody was wondering how much peripheral will we be able to see with all this lighting and fog and terror effects? Um, the terror effects and the fog, I mean, yeah, there will be, it will be harder to see everything. Uh, but we quite like that, honestly. Uh, if you remember as a mariner, you basically couldn't see anything except what was um, in your cone of light. Uh, and I tend to feel that having the complete picture is kind of less exciting for exploration. Ah, look, we found a wonder. Right, so if I get myself in this, your navigator is entranced by the wash of flowers, and soon, uh, soon arrive in the fields of Ashfordell, they recite the home of shadows who have been worn to weariness. Right, look what's happening now. Right. Everything's gone bright and lovely, and I'm going to need to tone down that headlight a bit. Uh, but what is actually happening here is my terror is decreasing in the face of these entirely lovely and not at all creepy fungal flower things. <laughs> Uh, they still disturb me. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of weird, aren't they? Uh, but, you know, you take beauty where you can find it in the high wilderness. <laughs> so, uh, if we explore here a bit, uh, well, our terror will reduce for a while, but not for long, because obviously otherwise it would get boring, because you just sit here all the time and never move on. So, yeah. And that is... Spectacles and Terror. Any questions? I'm going to come out of this now so we can so we can see people. Because it's actually half past four, but let's hang around and see if anyone... Yeah, I think we probably started a few minutes late as well. Yeah. So yeah, if anybody has any questions about the stuff that you've seen, let us know. Uh, I can't move the mouse. Uh, if you do... <laughs> Oh, no, I've got it, I've got it. What do we want? Mainstream, yeah. Again. 
Hello, Hello we're back. Hey, everybody. Hooray. <laughs> it's magic. Great. Okay, so flowers that are not trying. Yes, that's correct. Well, not all flowers are trying to read. You know, I mean, only. <laughs> I personally blame Toby because every time I look at a screen, there's something new and creepy on it, including those tubular flowers. So, what do you think, Cox? Are you, are you? Is this something to look forward to? We, 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 we live for your approval. <laughs> well, I've got a purple heart, so that's that's nice. That's a that's a medal, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, no one's. Uh, uh, since you have the headset in, Paul, could you hear? Is that terror music in there as well? For the uh, I don't think it was. No, it is in. It will be in in the build, but um, uh, I think it's in a separate branch of own. Can you do anything at spectacles other than reduce terror? Uh, well, you can reduce terror, or you can increase terror. Um, but if you're looking for um, uh, more meaningful interactions, then uh, they're mostly covered by discoveries, uh, which some of them which have stories attached to them. So. Uh, if you visit a wreck, for instance, you might be able to go on board and see what you can find and maybe pick up a stranded passenger or loot the safe or so on. Uh, and there are some special discoveries that are always there, uh, like the wells, uh, which have stories attached to them. Um, so yeah, I hope that kind of answers that one. One of the nice side effects of the... Pro yeah, oh, I keep quoting Chris, I keep thinking. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Middle for the battle, yep, that's right. Cool. Well, the, the, I'm seeing a lot of usage of the word cool, so that's nice. Will there be more ways to interact with floating stuff like that? Will be harming stuff? Will there be some exchanges of bartering on the spot? Well, entirely possible. Um, it depends. I mean, it depends on what they are. Obviously, if it's a beehive, then getting honey off it is the, is the main win. Uh, homesteads, I think, will have um, little stories attached to them. Uh, Chris can probably fill in better on that. Um, we're looking at uh, whether there'll be ways of uh, trading outside um, the main ports, but I'm not sure about that one yet. Uh, four is excited for the well. We're all excited for the wells. Uh, I wish I could have shown you the well, actually. Uh, it is, it is uh, in that scene, but we didn't get to it, but it's looking really quite special. It's quite nauseating, <laughs> actually, because uh, you've got the parallax and you've got this swirly, swirly thing, and then you've got your tiny little, um, your tiny little ship. Oh, cheers, Chris. He's uh, helping me out with the answers. Plus, along with, um, we mentioned the terror music will be going in, so that will add a lot to the atmosphere and exploration bit as well. Yeah. Um, because obviously the visual effects are amazing, but actually feeling that cacophony will be great. Yeah, and we got, I mean, there's lots of sound effects still to go in. Um, I think, I mean, like the automatic docking we showed you, I think what will really sell that is sort of you know, Pishtakov, either the engine kind of noises, uh, escaping hisses of steam and clanking of metal and so on and so forth. Uh, question for you. Uh, would you want to turn the headlight off, even if it didn't have any effect? <laughs> oh, they've gone off on one of the flukes. Uh, Chris is, I think, I'm not even sure what he's doing here. I do. Naughty Chris. Okay. It's slightly like talking to people on the moon, isn't it? Because you, uh, <laughs> you, sort of, you put a question out there and then there's nothing and then suddenly five minutes later there's this flood of answers. Yes, although well, thankfully we're not isolated. We are surrounded by other failed employees, so that's better. <laughs> hey, everybody. Depends on the surroundings. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think it's kind of a role-playing thing. I think yeah, it's nice to be able to sort of sneak around. Uh, and just be in the darkness for a minute, even... Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, the train whistle. Yeah. I'm not going to promise it. I'm going to keep not promising it right until the day we launch. <laughs> uh, although, obviously, you know, why wouldn't we? But I'm not going to promise it. Cool. Okay. Well. Well, if you... Um I guess we've covered everything we want to talk about because we showed them all the cool lighting effects, the fog, uh, the terror, adjustments, yep. and I think that looks like all the questions. Um, if you have any more though, feel free to comment anywhere on Kickstarter or Steam and we'll try to get around to answering them. And then of course, you know, we'll have future podcasts, although they'll probably 
in the future uh, be slightly more spread out because we're changing a bit how we do the vlogs and the podcasts because um, we want to make sure we can make these really exciting and pack a bunch of really cool stuff that will be coming out in the game. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to have dancing and tinsel and... Uh, we have had tinsel before. So that's true. We're, we're sadly tinsel free today. <laughs> uh, Chris I, know, I was very surprised you took down all the Christmas decorations before I got back. Yeah, I was... Uh, I was very shocked. The entire office was covered with glitter at which point I discovered lots of people are allergic to glitter. So that was... <laughs> That was that was a lumpy morning. Uh, all right. So on that note, <laughs> we will depart and uh, see you next time. So thank you for joining us, everyone, and asking questions. And then, Paul, if you would hit the waiting scene, we will waiting. say goodbye. Bye.